Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a nice little potato harvest for you guys. What's nice about harvesting potatoes now, it's, Ju it's July 20th. We've actually been having a really crazy, crazy heat wave here in Pennsylvania, is that I wanna focus on my fall vegetables. So one crop comes out and another crop goes in. And this is kind of really the time to be thinking about this stuff. So if you're in my area, this is really when you need to get something in the ground Otherwise, you know, it's gonna to get too cold. Uh, the daylight hours are gonna really shorten and you're not gonna reach that maturity on different things that need a longer season. You know, things like Brussels sprouts as an example, or even maybe things like broccoli. It could be quite difficult uh, for you to get things like that or cabbages. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually gonna be taking all these potatoes out. We're gonna do the harvest we're gonna clear this out, and then I'm gonna throw over top of this compost, and then I'm gonna direct seed into this bed, and then we're gonna throw a row cover over top of it. And the reason for the row cover here, I wanna show you this, it's a good example, is that it really helps with whitefly or other insects, any pests that are coming in here and potentially attacking our brassicas or other annuals that we put in. It's really important because in order to grow brassicas at this time of the year, First off, you need a heat tolerant brassica because today the heat index is over 100, right? So if it's really, really warm outside, you need something that's gonna not bolt. But also because it's so warm, there are certain insects around that are not normally around in the fall or in the spring. So there's something called whitefly, at least where I live, and it comes in here and really decimates a lot of the larger brassicas if it really can proliferate. And it also really affects the seedlings. If you direct seed some stuff, it gets those really young seedlings and you're kind of really off to a horrible start because if you're damaging those first few leaves on a seedling, it really puts that seedling far behind. So it's important, I think, to really have this row cover on here. So again, we're gonna clear this whole thing out. We're gonna stick to mostly in this video, just the potato harvest. We can talk about the variety here as we go along. And then we're gonna cover this again with compost, create ourselves a nice little no-dig bed, uh, even though we're digging in this right now. And then we can really start thinking about either direct seeding now or actually adding in some different things like uh, maybe some garlic. We can plant some garlic in here. We can plant some potatoes in here. Um, you know, we can plant uh, onions as well. So it's all really up in the air, but I wanna get some certain things in the ground now, get the row cover on, and I think this is a nice little transition from one crop to the other. So let me put you guys down right now and then we can kind of get into this potato harvest. So what I've been using actually is this, this bedding fork. And I wanna show you guys this now. I just got this at the store and I probably could have found something maybe a little cheaper and a little better, but this is really nice for picking up material like hay and, and mulch and, and wood chips. So I got it mostly for that, but it's pretty good for getting these potatoes out of the ground, which I didn't really expect them to be that deep as they are, but it seems like they are. And uh, I gotta get something in the ground that's not gonna hopefully decimate too much of the uh, potatoes, not gonna damage the potatoes. It's not gonna, um, we're gonna be able to get into the ground. It's really hard soil right here. This was not soil that I amended. This was not soil that I really had taken care of at all. This, is, this was grass, you know, four or five months ago. Um, and underneath it is this really heavy clay. So getting through this has been definitely a challenge. You can see here's the remnants of the potato we planted. This is a variety, by the way, called German Butterball. And it is supposed to be the tastiest potato there is. It's supposed to be even tastier than Yukon Gold. So what I'm doing is that we're gonna do a nice little taste test, I think, later on. I don't have any Yukon Gold to compare, but we will know for sure based off of what our potatoes tasted like last year. All right, let's pull this one up. This harvest doesn't look, this one doesn't look too bad. This one looks a bit better than the other one. Some much larger potatoes here. That's good to see. Oh, these are nice. And what's nice about 
growing your own potatoes, guys, one, you can choose the variety, okay? I mean, that's that should be obvious to us all. There's better varieties in every single thing that we grow. But also, they're really soft, buttery, uh, creamy potatoes with a skin that isn't hard. It hasn't been cured yet. The skin's really, really smooth. So this is a really good eating potato. Um, you know, that's really what it's all about, is getting a higher quality product than we can get at the store. And if we can't, then what's the point, in my opinion? Now, you can get these potatoes like this. You know, you can get them, those really small potatoes at the store. They're usually like multicolored. They have like a blue one, a red one, a yellow one. So that exists, but yeah, they're really expensive. And you can just get yourself some seed potatoes and it's probably more worth it, at least so far. We're gonna really find out from this harvest to see if it is indeed worth it. But this may take me quite a bit of time to get through this entire harvest. <laughs> And I don't really have the battery for it. So you can see here's some of the potatoes from that particular plant. As I get in, by the way, deeper into the bed, there are going to be more potatoes. Uh, that's just going to be a fact because the potatoes on the edge of the bed didn't perform well because of our lawn guys. And yeah, you're probably shaking your head, lawn guys, but they really do more damage than... Uh, they really hurt more than they help, in my opinion. I'm gonna bring you guys over now to a different planting. We had done some in compost. But what we had done is really stuck the potato just on the top of the soil like this, and then covered that with so much straw, and that was it, that's all we did. You can see actually this potato is quite green. So that's not good. This may be something we have to plant rather than eat. But uh, let me take you guys over here Instead of putting some of these guys on our hard clay, I put some in compost. And I did the same method where it's just directly on top of the soil. However, um, in fact, I may not even need this fork because of how loose the soil is right here. So the soil should be looser, more nutritious, etc., etc. Everything should be better. Okay, well, I still am gonna need it. Because we pulled up the plant, but that's all we got. And maybe we could have waited a bit longer with some of these. All right, here's some decent potatoes. See, most of them are like right on the surface of the compost. You can get in here with your hands. This is not bad at all. So you can see the difference here. You know, look at this nice soil compared to the other soil that I was dealing with. So I'm just digging around in here, seeing if there's anything else in here. And I bet you there is, but I don't know if I have the most time to come in here and just start messing around with that. All right, everyone. So I want to show you guys the harvest now. Um, we're really like a few days after what we did. And kind of what we talked about earlier in the video was getting this whole thing set up you know, the way we want it so that we can direct seed some brassicas in here. So what we did is just very simple. Uh, we took out all the potatoes, really um, gave this a nice little bed prep, took out all the mulch, all that straw, all the tops of the potatoes. We put that underneath some of these grapevines here. But then also we stuck it over here in a pile for now because what we're gonna do is take a lot of wood chips, a lot of mulch, and we're gonna put down some cardboard first underneath these apple trees, clear out a lot of these weeds, man. We had just have so many weeds in here. It's been an area that I've neglected all spring, all summer. Um, and these apple trees need it. They need more, they need more assistance. Some of these guys don't look really that great. They're on dwarf rootstocks. They just don't grow very quickly. I think they have weak root systems. Some of them have been more susceptible to things like aphids and other different things. And to be honest with you, I don't really want to grow many things underneath these trees. I think they're very shallow rooted. So we'll put down a lot of mulch, put down a lot of organic material, 
Um, and that's going to break down in the compost over time and we're going to have healthier apple trees because of it. But unfortunately it's going to take a few years for that to happen. But you can see this is all really planned well and came out well. Like this is really nice soil. We put down the Just Natural uh, soil conditioner. I love this stuff. This is great for growing anything, guys. It's half compost and the other half is uh, pine bark. And that stuff really helps break down. I think it gives a nice little breakdown of nutrients a bit more over time. Whereas you do have some pieces now, which if the soil's broken down enough, which sometimes it's not, but in most cases it is, is that um, it is broken down enough to really give a good result in the first year that you use the soil. So for me, it's great for seeding into, it holds lots of water. It looks a bit dry on the surface, but underneath it is completely wet. And then later today, because we've already seeded this, I've seeded a whole bunch of different brassicas, some carrots, different things like that. It's gonna rain about an inch and a half. This is gonna germinate so well. I have this other, really about 60, 70% of the bed, I haven't put anything in yet. So we're gonna think about what we can do inside, start some things indoors, and then also think about kind of what I wanna do with garlic next year, maybe onions next year, even potatoes next year. I'm kind of debating. Here's our little potato harvest, by the way. And it really is a bit little. I mean, it's it's definitely more potatoes than what I started out with. <laughs> but not many of them are that big. This one's actually green right here. But the green ones and the larger ones, I'm just going to replant them probably somewhere and grow some potatoes next year, probably in a better location. This area doesn't get a whole lot of light. Um, also, this is not really the biggest area. I mean. I started out with probably around eight pounds of potatoes. Um, I ordered 10, but I probably only used about eight. And this is a three foot by maybe, uh, I don't know, 10 foot or 12 foot, something like that. I think it's about 12 or 14 feet long. And then you've got some areas in here underneath the grapevines, which really don't get a whole lot of light. I mean, the fact that I was able to get this amount of potatoes, this is definitely, if I had to guess, I would say it's probably close to 15 pounds, maybe 20 pounds. So we maybe doubled what we originally put into this, but to be honest with you, it's probably not the best success. And I have to attribute that probably due to the fact that this bed, there's probably some potatoes, by the way, still in here. <laughs> that they're gonna come up as volunteers next year, but I have a feeling that um, it was largely due to the fact that we probably should have put down some nice compost first, some well-draining soil, nutritious soil, you know, that's gonna hold a lot of water, and then bury the potato just, just enough, you know, we don't have to bury it too deep, and then throw over even more straw than we did. I think the technique and what I did was a lot less work than what some people do with their potatoes. I mean, potatoes are so easy in general. You literally just put them in the ground and forget about them, come back 90, 120 days later, and you dig them up. I mean, it's so, so simple. There's no care involved at all, at least where I live. I mean, you may have some pests, you may have to water them where you guys live, but for me, I did nothing. So for me, you know, a completely carefree crop, I think it was worth it. But would I do this again for the amount of space that these took up? Probably not. It's gonna largely depend on how good these potatoes are. And we talked about the German butterball and how good German butterball is supposed to be. It's supposed to be better than um, Yukon Gold, like we said earlier in this video when I filmed this a couple days ago. We'll see. And also we'll see, you know, when I talked about the skin is that these are probably not gonna be the best baked potato, but they are gonna be the best for cooking, for frying them up in the pan they're going to be incredible. You know, we can even make probably really good chips out of them. Um, I really recommend, guys, for those of you who don't know what Old Bay is, invest in some Old Bay, okay? Get yourself some potatoes, slice them up real nice and thin, cover them with some Old Bay, uh, a little bit of olive oil, put them in the oven for a really short time. You don't have to even have the temperature too hot. I think maybe I don't know the exact temperature, but I'm going to say 300, 350, something like that. And then put them in there for about 10 minutes. See how they come out. They should start browning a bit. You want them really crispy. You don't want them burnt. Take them out. 
you can even sprinkle some more old bay on at that point oh my god they're so good so that's kind of it for this video guys the last thing i want to mention is that we did talk about i think this covering here and maybe a different video maybe we did it in this potato video i'm not sure but this is really important for this time of the year especially for what we've seeded a bunch of brassicas not necessarily the carrots but we want to protect these young seedlings from insects some insects you can't really even see them so it's really important i think to get this this mesh on and you know whatever else that i that it is that i put in this bed is certainly excuse me certainly going to be covered with mesh i have another mesh um, covering that i have used in a, another bed earlier in the year we're going to put this down here on this one because these seedlings guys if i get you a nice closer look you know here's some of the brassica seedlings right in here and they already got some holes in them they've got some damage on them some white little marks there that is from the white fly so certainly on a large variety of these you know crops that you guys grow they're gonna have some insect pressure largely some of them you can't even see, most of them you can't even see so um you know i think it's a really good idea but that is kind of the video here guys i hope you enjoyed this little harvest of the potatoes um yeah i mean seriously very easy to grow again i it's gonna have to depend on how good they are and you know how much space i have next year I, i'd rather grow a lot more melons i think next year you know really let them sprawl along the ground some of the melons that i have over here are doing decent but a lot of them have been killed off by the wilt and if i could grow them on the ground and cover them with mesh keep that cucumber beetle out uh it's going to be a phenomenal phenomenal uh crop of melons so you know growing them vertically i think really works but you have to be on top of surround and keeping that cucumber beetle away it just can get a bit tricky here unless you're growing them in a greenhouse so um, anyway guys i want to thank you all for watching this one if you enjoyed it you know give us a nice little thumbs up subscribe check us out on facebook instagram and twitter check out the website as well we are changing the website to a different host uh, actually not a different host but a different name different domain um, so if you guys are already subscribed to the website you should continue to be subscribed but if you haven't already subscribed check out the blog it is going to be something special really interesting trying to get a lot of traffic flowing into that direction and uh, yeah we'll see you guys soon take care we'll see you for tomorrow's video take care everyone